Hello to all of you. I think we're ready to go ahead and get started here. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today for our webinar, Transforming Libraries Through Collaboration, Collections, and Endowment Building. I'm Janet Nelson, the Director of Industry Relations for DEMCO, and I will be moderating today's session. Before we get started, I just wanted to go through some housekeeping details, and then I'll introduce our speaker, and he'll get started with the presentation. On your computer, you should see a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. And if you have a question or are trying to get any type of technical issue resolved, please feel free to type something in there, and we'll do our best to get back to you as quickly as we can. We will pause in the middle of the presentation and at the end of the session for questions. So if something comes up during the session that you'd like clarification on or want to respond to or you just have some type of question that's coming up, I encourage you to type it in and we'll be compiling those thoughts and questions and can address them during our breaks. If we don't have time to get to your question during the session, we'll be sure to get all of those questions answered and posted with the recorded webcast after the event. There's also specific contact information available for Tom or myself that you should see on your screen right now. So you can feel free to email us separately if you have specific questions that we may be able to help you with after the session. We will be using Twitter, and the hashtag we're using there is hashtag DemcoIdeas. So you should be able to see that hashtag on, the, on your screen right now in the chat box and also on the, the general screen. Um, that feed will be monitored for questions and comments as well. So before we start, we're interested in finding out how many of you currently collaborate with other libraries. So just for fun, we want to do a quick poll of the audience. So you will have a minute or two to log your answer, and we can share the results with all of you. OK, I believe that's all in the housekeeping, so let's move on to introductions. As I mentioned, I'm Janet Nelson. I'll be moderating today's session. DEMCO is always interested in how we can better serve the needs of our customers, and we've discovered that these webinars are a great way for us to do this. So finding ways to keep our libraries relevant and valuable resources for our communities has become very important, particularly with today's economic situation. We've found our customers are getting very creative in where they find their resources and how they collaborate with others in the community to continue to provide the services that their communities are looking for. So I'm very pleased that Tom Linfield is able to join us as our speaker today. Tom is Vice President of Grant Making and Community Initiatives with the Madison Community Foundation and has been instrumental in the development of some very unique community initiatives with local libraries. His organization has found creative ways to encourage area libraries to work together to maximize their resources and extend even more services than they would be able to on their own. Uh, today's presentation is going to walk you through an approach that's been used in Dane County, Wisconsin to enrich collections, build a programming endowment, and create new collaborative opportunities between libraries. From our registration information, we can see that we have quite a bit of diversity in the types of libraries that are joining us today. And while the examples that are being presented focus on what's been implemented in public libraries within a region, there are ideas that can be taken away that would be appropriate in a variety of situations if they are just adapted a little bit. So Tom, I'm going to put the controls into your hands, and you can get started when you're ready. OK, well, thank you. And uh, welcome, everybody. Thrilled to have so many participants from around the country. I'm sitting in Madison, Wisconsin, where it's very cold but sunny today. And excited to talk to you about some of the work that we've been doing with libraries here at the Madison Community Foundation. And as Janet mentioned, my contact information is here. Please feel free if you want to email me separately or give me a call. Uh, all of my contact information is also on the Madison Community Foundation website. Uh, always happy to chat. I'm a huge, this has been one of my favorite projects to work on uh, since I started here at the Madison Community Foundation. The Madison Community Foundation, our uh, tagline is helping good people do good. And that has certainly been true as we've worked on these library projects. So I'm going to walk you through, quickly, I'm going to walk you through uh, several different projects that we've been doing. Now we have been working with public libraries, the public libraries in Dane County, Wisconsin. But I think some of the collaborative work we've done, some of the fundraising ideas, some of the innovative partnerships, I think those are replicable not only at public libraries. So I know, um, for instance, I think there's some real lessons learned for school libraries who are perhaps interested in working with each other. I tend to talk quickly and with a lot of passion. There's a lot of information on the slide, so I will talk quickly as I go through today. But feel free always to go back and refer to some of the information. I will not be reading the slides. And uh, Janet, I think, also mentioned this, that 
all of the materials that I'm going to share with you, not only the slides, but some of the images and materials that you'll see during the slide presentation, those will all be available to you online afterwards. So let me start with a library snapshot. Uh, we have um, 28 separate public libraries in Dane County. Nine of them are part of the Madison Public Library System. Madison is our capital. And then the other 19 entities are around the county. Some are very small, some are large, some have been newly renovated. And then they're all part of a South Central Library System, which is, I think, now 53 libraries in at least three or four counties working together. So it's a very strong interlibrary loan program. If you have access to one library, that means you have access to three million materials overall. Uh, and they circulate quite a bit. So very high use of libraries in Dane County. Here's a picture of the Madison Community Foundation. Uh, we're, um, we're a small foundation in terms of staffing. There are 10 of us. And there's one of us who's involved as, uh, with the grants program. And that's my role here. Um, we've been around a while. We have about 970 funds. Uh, 21 of those funds are now library endowment funds. So for those of you who are not working or with community foundations yet or not familiar, basically we help individuals and agencies set up permanent endowment funds. And then each year, they choose 5% of those funds, and they may distribute them to any nonprofit in the world. Um, uh, individuals tend to do it for charitable reasons, and agencies tend to do it as a permanent um, revenue stream. And then the community we're in, Dane County, Wisconsin, is a mix of urban spaces and rural spaces, a very agricultural county. Um, but Madison is the capital. So we've got the University of Wisconsin, which is a 50,000 student university, and the Wisconsin state government. Madison comprises about half of Dane County. The Madison Community Foundation, over the past decade or so, has done a lot of work with public libraries. And I'll touch on each of these as I go through today. Uh, and then we'll pause a few times for questions. But the, the, uh, the relationship has, has really been building. And so I would say it began more reactively with public libraries doing capital campaigns and applying to us to help them with that funding. So there have been a dozen successful capital campaigns over the last 12 years. In fact, the last two or three campaigns they successfully raised more money than they intended, and several of the libraries then used that extra money to start endowments. We also undertook a major collections project, which was the first time we had done collaborative work with all of the libraries. I'll talk about that quite a bit. And then we are working on something called the Beyond the Page Initiative, and that's a very large countywide endowment um, and pretty exciting and, and unique idea, we think. So just a quick picture of where funding is uh, here for the libraries. So this chart gives you sort of a quick visual sense that uh, funding has been increasing to the libraries, not only from the donors who have their funds here. So we have a very philanthropic community, but also our own grant making. And this stops in 2010, but you would see those bars going up in 2011 and 2012. In terms of endowments, and I know many of you may be sitting there thinking, well, we don't have, we didn't even have an endowment. So about a decade ago, none of the libraries here did either. We had a few endowments, and the total was $20,000. Uh, today, we have over 3 million endowments and 21 different library endowments. So enormous growth, enormous generosity. And I think in many cases, it's just a situation where people had never been asked to give to a library endowment. And once they were asked, they, they said yes and happily, because people love libraries. In fact, I should have started there. One of the reasons that we got so involved in libraries was because we really feel at the Community Foundation that libraries are extraordinary, but not enough people know the scope of what libraries are. This idea of libraries is more than just a place to check out books. is something we've been really working hard on helping the libraries tell their story. We think you all have an extraordinary story to tell, um, but we know you have degrees, uh, master's degrees in library science, not necessarily marketing or fundraising. So that's where the Community Foundation was able to bring some of our energy and expertise into play. Here are just a few pictures of recently funded libraries, um, two in Madison. And the bottom right one is in Fitchburg, uh, Wisconsin. 
And I wanted to show you an image of that because the Fitchburg Library is not a renovated library or a library replacing something that used to be there, which is what all of the others are. The Fitchburg Library is actually a brand new library that was added to all of the libraries here. And my understanding is that last year, I think there were only two brand new additional libraries in the country. And so we, we have one of those. And that was a successful $14 million campaign. Finally, we are um, redoing our flagship downtown Madison Library. This is a $30 million building being built on the site of the current library. So it's gutted. I get to tour it with a hard hat tour this week. Um, this is really going to be quite an amazing facility, uh, very innovative, very modern. We're taking a 60s building and, and redoing it. So it's been a long time coming. And it's going on at the same time as one of the campaigns that I'll talk about. So there's sort of um, some challenges and opportunities there. The Madison Community Foundation gave one of our largest gifts ever to, to help with this campaign. So let me talk about the Library Collections Project. The way this developed was having done so many capital campaigns, having done about a dozen different library capital campaigns, we gathered a group of librarians together and we said, what is next for libraries? How could we help strengthen the libraries? And what came out of this was the collections. There's a need for increased collections. And what we learned in our conversations was that each one of the libraries was doing their own separate collections. Now, the Madison Public Library system with its nine branches, they do some, they do centralized collections. But the other 19 libraries around the county were all doing their own separate collections, meaning they were all ordering their 20 copies of the latest John Grisham novel. And so we said to them, what if we challenged you to do, to, to participate in a collections project, but it would have, we would give each of you $25,000 to build a specific, subject-specific collection. Um, but there would be two, two rules. One is each of you needs to pick a different subject. And each of the materials you purchase must be shared system-wide. So in fact, we were, we were inviting the then 27 public libraries, because Fitchburg had not been built yet, to basically build a really amazing collection and then share it. Uh, one of the things that came out of those discussions was, um, first of all, they were very excited about the opportunity. But they said, you know, it takes a lot of money to catalog these materials. So that's why you'll see on your screen, we ended up giving everybody 27500 so an additional 10% for cataloging fees. So we really wanted to set the libraries up for success. Now, what do I mean when I say, uh, oh, uh, let me just quickly give you a, a picture. This is, uh, I apologize for the, the, uh, the quality of this slide. This is me hand making something. But this gives you a sense of our county and of the libraries in the county. And the color coding indicates that we began with only 12 of the 27 libraries. And these were the 12 libraries with whom we had capital campaign relationship. So we wanted to pilot the project with the 12 libraries we knew already. And then after one year, we did an evaluation. It was a two year. The 27,500 was donated over two years. So after year one, we did an evaluation. And the evaluation was so positive that then we included the remaining 15 libraries. So there are, there are 27 libraries. And the green uh, circles actually indicate where the Dane County Bookmobile goes. And the Dane County Bookmobile was considered as its own separate entity. So it was one of those 27. Uh, they now go to 16 different locations around the county. So we have a pretty uh, thriving library system, but again, all working separately. So what did the collections project look like? Well, first of all, we knew that if we were going to do this, we wanted to let people know. So we really wanted to promote the libraries, promote the idea. So we came up with this tagline that we continue to use, great libraries make great communities. The Madison Community Foundation did the graphic design and printing and paid for the costs. For this brochure, what you're seeing is a, it's actually a trifold. But this gives you a sense of we wanted color, we wanted imagination. And we printed, I think, 15,000 of these that were then handed out at each library. So each library could say, well, our specific collection is X, but there are 26 others around the county. And uh, what those images are are really these icons to help brand. So you'll see there are a variety of different kinds of collections. Um, 
one library did art and architecture, another did uh, comics and anime, film, film history, ecology, world culture, popular science, a really a huge variety. Uh, Downtown Madison did um, business uh, materials and entrepreneurship. So the way those collections got chosen, it was up to each library, but they couldn't duplicate. So where somebody was doing film and somebody else was doing pop culture, we really encouraged them to talk to each other so they wouldn't be duplicating things. Um, we said to the libraries, what's your strength? You could build on a strength, or what is your interest? One did wellness, and they had done quite a bit of wellness programming, so they wanted to add a collection um, that would reflect the programming that they were doing. Uh, another one did music, and they wanted to become the music library, so they were really interested in not only collections, um, uh, they bought a lot of uh, CDs, but also um, bringing in uh, instrumentalists, bringing in musical groups, so that would be sort of a go-to place for that kind of programming. So some of them really helped individualize and brand their own libraries in addition to doing that collections work. Here's an example of one library. So this is Deerfield, and they did sports and fitness. And here's some of the programming that came out around that. Uh, chair yoga, they brought in a nutritionist, they brought in a massage therapist, and for the kids they had interactive um, kinds of games like Dance Dance Revolution and you know, Wii Bowling, Wii Tennis, etc. Um, and this was, their, this was their logo. They also um, put quite a bit of money into audiobooks and playways, and at the time that we began, so this is 2008, nobody had playways except for this one library, and they had a few. And they were really interested in, in, uh, in playaways. So uh, we said to them, great, but you can, then you need to let them circulate through interlibrary loan. And it was really amazing because they were able to put a lot of money into that. They circulated around the county. And today, these are one of the most popular items, playaways, in, in the county. And I'll just show you a few slides of some of the programming that came out of this. And we didn't go into it with any kind of um, matching funds that were necessary, but we had hoped that they would raise some other money, and a few did. But we did go in with the hope that if you can build the collection, we really encourage you to build some programming around it. So Deerfield started something. Um, they arranged a few pickleball games. And pickleball is a game It's a low-impact sport, so very friendly for um, seniors to play. And it's a combination of sort of badminton and ping pong. And it became so popular that there is now a Pickleball League. Uh, I'm sure many of you are doing storytelling hours. All of our libraries are. One of the libraries, however, did foreign languages as their subject. And so they began experimenting with different languages. They introduced Spanish storytelling hour, which became so popular. I think it's, it's either bi-weekly or weekly now. So a few years later, it is continuing. Another library tried a Chinese language hour and 80 people showed up the first day. They were surprised. Um, another library in the Madison system tried six different languages um, as their storytelling hour. So really exciting sort of flavors to all of this. Uh, one library did popular science, so started bringing in a lot of hands-on science. And if you can see it, but the gentleman on the right has a turtle. So this idea of bringing in messiness. Um, another library did an engineering project using sand. They brought in all the sand, and the kids made sand castles. So an exciting opportunity for the libraries to show patrons that they're much more than just a repository of material, that it's really a, a connection place, a place to be, to grow, and to be involved with content, uh, whether it's written or, or live or, or music. So it was very um, successful. Here's another example, uh, music. Uh, this is a Japanese drumming group. Uh, so the collections project was really our first foray into this collaborative, county-wide collaboration. So every library involved, um, we, we were just thrilled with how it went. It really developed um, into a really rich project. Uh, I will say one lesson learned was we had anticipated that the libraries would do some more fundraising. Not that they had to, but because they had a wonderful opportunity to do so, and they didn't. Um, one of the things that we talked about when their libraries were first applying was this idea of a buy a book campaign that they would maybe list if you know if they chose art and architecture maybe they'd put up a list of a hundred different expensive art books 
and uh, you know allow patrons the opportunity to purchase books for the library. And uh, many of them, it was interesting, in their first year evaluations would say, we didn't do it, but we really hope to do it in year two. And then when the year two evaluations came in, they said, oh, we really hope to do it, but we never did it. And so we, we learned a little bit there about a bit of the discomfort um, um, on the librarian's behalf of, uh, of fundraising. So at this point, if there are any questions, I know I, go, I talk quickly and that's a lot of information, but I'm happy to answer anything you might want to know. Okay, Tom. Um, I'm going to give you a question here in just one minute, um, but in the meantime, we do have a second poll that we would like to undertake. Um, so the question here is, do you do fundraising for your library beyond a yearly gift appeal? So you should see that popping up on your screen and you can answer that. Um, the question that we have is, could you elaborate just a little bit more on how the collection themes were chosen? Uh, yes, so the, uh, the themes were up to each library, and so we'd get together in groups, and people would think about it, and they'd submit them. And in, in a few cases, a couple of people wanted to do the same thing, and we found ways to, to sort of divide that. Um, for the library that picked foreign languages, they are in a quite a diverse community. and. Uh, and so they really wanted to to enrich their programs. And you know, the the exciting thing about the collections program is that all all of the libraries, of course, have a collections budget, um, but it gets spread out, right? They have to be generalists. And we were saying, here you get to be, you get to borrow as deeply as you want. Um, uh, it was a really fun visiting libraries and having library staff come up and say, oh, I can't believe we we were able to get that 15-piece opera set or or whatever. So things that they never would have been able to buy. One library. Um, was having, uh, they're very closely aligned with their school district, and they were having literacy issues, so they actually were able to purchase for a couple thousand dollars um, this really interesting computer machine that has all sorts of games on it, but they're literacy games. So in their words, we trick kids into learning because they want to play these games. The computer became so popular that they actually had to have a sign-up sheet, so, uh, so kids would sign up and order. Another library, um, shares a, a building with the Urban League and is in a neighborhood which is somewhat um, troubled. And so they really wanted to um, focus on sort of family transitions, family issues, employment, training. Um, so they were trying to really provide new services to people, helping them get employment, things like that. Um, and then one other library um, was had um, a lot of restaurants in their area. They became food and nutrition, and it was really fun to watch them because they became the premier uh, collector of cookbooks in the county. And so you can go there on site and just be in stack after stack of, of cookbooks, and of course then they all travel. Um, the, the last one I'll mention, we had one library which is very small, and they were terrified when they heard, what, we have to spend $25,000 on materials, we don't have the shelf room. Um, so we did two things. We said, well, first of all, you can spend this out over three years instead of two years if that's helpful. Um, but what they ended up doing was books on tape, because they literally cannot keep those on the shelves. So we let them spend a little more money on extra shelving. But the circulation for these collections has been probably two or three times higher than the circulation for, for other materials. It's just been really phenomenal circulation. Great. That's awesome information, Tom. Um, I think right now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move on, and then I will save any other questions until the end, um, just so we make sure we get everything in. And I'll just say to these two polls, it's interesting to see the responses, because if we polled the Dane County Libraries on collaboration, it would have been almost nil. Um, so they really weren't doing any collaboration, and many of them are just not doing any fundraising at all beyond the letter that they sent to the Friends Group asking for $10 or $20. So in about year three, it ended up, the, this project took about four years. So in about year three, we went to the libraries and we said, what's next? How can we help strengthen libraries? And what the libraries talked about was programming. So the good news was that the, pri the libraries are doing an extraordinary amount of programming. And when you add all 28 of the libraries together, they offer about 6,000 programs per year with over 200,000 people attending. Now, that number is a little deceptive because 5,000 of those programs are children's programs for 180,000 people. So there are 1,000 programs geared towards adults. 
with only 20,000 attending. And that's the aggregate. When you add all of the budgets up from all 28 of those entities, you only come up with 89,000 a year. So clearly the libraries are stretching their dollars. Half of the libraries actually had no programming budget, so were reliant on, on donated time um, when speakers would come in. And the other half have really been fighting some municipal budget battles and have a declining budget. And here are just some more examples of some of the programming that people were already doing. So this is one of our new libraries. They have um, done some big community celebrations, really bringing the entire community out and celebrating the library sort of the flagship of that community. Uh, this is a 30-foot dinosaur. I think it comes from the Smithsonian. And one of our libraries has a really nice space. And what they do is they bring something like this in, and then they had a month of dinosaur days. So they did programming pretty much every single day for an entire month and publicized it widely. So that, again, that's just one library. Uh, here's another library doing something creative. Um, and I present these slides. I've been trying to tell the library story at a lot of places, Rotary Clubs, Chamber of Commerce, Lions Club. Anywhere we can go, we are trying to present the story. So a lot of the slides, especially the ones with visuals that you're seeing today, we are trying to get out and about, and we're trying to get the librarians out and about to help tell the story. And I always smile when I see this one, because it's either really heartwarming or it's terrifying. Um, and, and frankly, so is this one. Um, this is uh, a, a trio um, playing at one of This is the small library that I said was afraid to spend the money that they, they did the books on tape. Uh, so a huge variety. This is a stuffed animal camp out. Uh, this is a library where the kids come and play, and they bring their stuffed animals. And then the stuffed animals stay for a sleepover. And then the librarians take photographs of the stuffed animals and the antics uh, that they get up to overnight and then give them to the kids and their families when they return the next day. Um, this is the last slide I'll show of just the variety. And some of you may be doing this. It's an extraordinary program. Uh, for children who are poor readers and not confident readers, who are very uncomfortable reading to grown-ups, uh, we have this program in several of our libraries called Read to a Dog. And these are therapy dogs. And the children have absolutely no problem, no issue, in just reading aloud to the dog. So it's a terrific um, kind of literacy program. And these are the kinds of programs that are happening individually. And what we're hoping to do is expand some of this programming to multiple libraries. So that's sort of step one of the collaboration. So we said to the libraries, well, what if we could help you uh, double the amount of programming money that you had each year, make sure that it wasn't subject to municipal budget cuts. Um, and, but it would, the idea would be that we'd all collaborate together. And uh, they liked the idea. So Madison Community Foundation, um, with, with, in conjunction with all 28 libraries, began this project called Beyond the Page. And so we began by submitting a grant to the National Endowment for the Humanities. Now, the NEH has a wonderful program called the Challenge Grant Program. And they give challenge grants to organizations around the country to help strengthen the humanities. So they will help you build permanent endowments to help strengthen the humanities. And probably 70 or 80 percent of the programming that we've been looking at has some sort of humanities content. So it seemed like a perfect fit. We applied. We were only one of only 20 grants given. And it was we received $350,000 as a challenge grant. And the challenge grant comes with uh, the proviso that you raise $3 for every $1 that the government gives you. So this gives us, when you add those figures together, a $1.4 million endowment goal. And you have four years, basically, to raise that money. So if any of you are thinking of, of this might be an interesting model for you, that would be a great place to start, either with the NEH or if you have a local funder who can help um, give you a challenge grant. Um, we did not set out, either with a collections project or with a Beyond the Page project, to create a model. We, we did not know, and we found out only once we were enmeshed in these programs, that they were actually quite unique. So according to the NEH, this is the first time uh, a county's libraries have collaborated on an endowment together. And according to the librarians we were working with, uh, no one had done a similar collections project. So we were surprised to learn that. Um, but we were excited, too, because we think 
it really is a wonderful model and, and certainly uh, rec replicable. I uh, mentioned some of these. So here's how the campaign divides out. What we said to the libraries, who were very, very skittish about the fundraising, we said the Madison Community Foundation will help uh, sort of lead the way. With your help, we will do prospects. We will do the major donors. But each of you has to agree to raise some portion of this money. So the number we came out with over these four years was $10,000. So each of our 28 libraries has to raise 10000 And what we said is basically, we'll raise a million if you raise 10000 and uh, And that's how it's been working. We also provide a lot of technical expertise, so um, recommendations of where to apply to, fundraising recommendations, um, event planning, coordination. And we funded all of the campaign costs. Uh, those include hiring somebody to help coordinate the campaign and paying for all of the materials and the mailings, and I'm going to show you a variety of those. Uh, here, just a quick slide, uh, just to give you a sense of the scope. I think this is a slide that comes right out of our NEH grant application, and it really shows how many different partners are being affected, and I think that the unique nature of this collaboration is something that really helped us get that award. So in the middle, you see a listing of all of the different libraries. On the right, however, you see all of these community partners. And we were able to get letters of support from at least 20 different organizations in the area, each one of them saying, the NEH should support the libraries, because this is the effect it will have. This is how it will allow us to partner together. So it was much richer it, it much, you know, to show that the libraries are such an important part of the fabric of the community. And on the left, you see Den County Library Services, Madison Community Foundation, and then some of the other pieces that we put together for the leadership of the project. I should mention the Dane County Library Service, and they are the entity that um, sort of coordinates all of the libraries in Dane County. They are the grant recipient of record, and the fund is actually in their name. So the Madison Community Foundation did not apply for the grant. We wrote the grant, but it's for the Dane County Library Service. And that's important because the libraries will control this fund. The MCF will invest the fund and will administer the fund, but how those funds are spent, and eventually that's going to be at least $70,000 a year for programming, that is completely up to the libraries to determine how that will get spent at which libraries. Here is the set of expectations. These were our goals as we went into this project. And I thought it would be interesting to look at them side by side, because you'll note that they are not always the same goals. And that comes back when I talk about lessons learned. So the top one is we both wanted to build a library endowment. Both very clear, fit both of us. On the library side, the libraries were interested in enriching their programming. They wanted to offer annual funding to all of the libraries to do programming. And they wanted control of the funding pool. So that was set up from the beginning. The foundation was interested in not only building the Library and Diamond, but helping establish and strengthen donor relationships, not only for ourselves, but for the libraries. We really wanted to increase interlibrary collaboration. Uh, in this day and age, nonprofits who are really excelling in this financial climate are those who are being innovative, are those who are partnering together, building efficiencies. And we noticed that the libraries were a bit up behind on that. Um, and same with the fourth thing, building the fundraising capacity. So our hope was to really help build the fundraising capacity of the libraries. Libraries seem to be one of the last nonprofit areas that isn't regularly fundraising beyond sort of book sales um, and, and maybe some donations from friends. And so that's something we were really interested in. Um, when we began the project, one of the librarians raised their hand in a meeting and said, uh, well, you know, we were talking about them raising 10000 and she raised her hand and said, our major gift for us is $50. How are we going to get to $10,000? Uh, and once we were able to go out and have this discussion with donors that this is something that will affect the entire county, one of our first gifts from somebody was $250,000. So it's been a great model, and it's sort of, I think, changed the way some of the libraries look at their importance and, and the fact that people want to give them money. Here's a quick timeline. So I started with collections because that's really when we built a lot of the relationships together. We applied for the NEH application we were writing out three years ago. We conducted a silent phase of the campaign, which means for the first half of our campaign time, we weren't out in public. 
we were just talking to individuals, we wanted to raise at least $700,000 before we went public for smaller gifts. During National Library Week this week, we made a big hoo-ha during National Library Week, and that's when the public phase was announced. We will continue fundraising through 2013 uh, with a variety of different events. And then for the NEH sake, we must be done by July 2014. All cash has to be in hand. Uh, so what's the first thing we did? Well, the first thing we did whoops, is we went to, um, uh, we built a website. Now, the Beyond the Page campaign, uh, the rabbit is our logo. That's the name of the campaign. And it turns out that all of the libraries that were doing programming were listing it on their own individual websites. So there was no single place that you could go to find out everything you wanted about programming in the county. So uh, it was exciting to create a website to do that. And we hired our graphic designer to help come up with that. Now, the website doubled. The website is both the Capital Campaign website. So right now, when you come to it on the splash page, you see a big red button to donate now. You see sort of a thermometer, that stack of books that says, where are we going in terms of our fundraising? How far have we come? But that will go away. So in 2014, that will go away. And what will remain is a website that is really just committed to content and programming. And all of the libraries can just feed that content right into a calendar on the website. We also started a Facebook page. We printed up um, about 50,000 brochures. So this, again, this is a trifold. These were distributed not only to Madison Community Foundation donors, but we mailed it to donor lists um, that the libraries provided with us. And then each library has them um, sitting out, and ha they're handing them out. We also did something that we called our Stuffing Weeks, um, which four times over the year, uh, the librarians would put materials that we would print, like this brochure, directly into holds. So for one week, everybody who was leaving the library with materials would walk away with this. And in the brochure, if you open it all the way up, you see a map of the libraries. We're big into maps. And this is one of the reasons, and this is why I keep saying, talk about your story. What is your story? The story we wanted to tell was the power of libraries throughout the county not the power of your local library. Because we know is that people who've been giving, who support the libraries, are very connected often with one, maybe two individual libraries. But people understand the power of the entire county library system. So here you see not only in green all of the different libraries, but also that orange color, that's the Dane County Bookmobile. And that's been a real thing. When we go out and talk to major donors, that's what we're using. We're showing them that map. We're talking about the power of libraries and using aggregate numbers. We printed up t-shirts for all of the libraries. So there are 500 librarians in, in uh, Dane County, Wisconsin, with these very bright yellow t-shirts. On the back, they say, celebrating the humanities. And on the front, they have the rabbit logo and the beyond the page. And that's during the stuffing weeks. Um, they all wear them again. So anybody you encounter in the library during that week is, is bright yellow. And we've really been trying to use that bright yellow to to pop and, and to bring some whimsy into the campaign with the Lewis Carroll rabbit. The top left, you see a humanities exhibit. So one of the ideas was to create these posters that are permanent posters. They're printed on plastic. And um, every month, every library would have sort of a revolving exhibit of materials. What was nice about this is that the libraries are doing this sort of thing anyway, but this was a way to concentrate it and brand it with the campaign. And here's an image of what that poster looks like. So again, it's permanent. It's on plastic. Uh, when I say evergreen, it means there's no date on it. So they can use this this year, but they could be using it three years from now. We also left this big white space in the middle because we know the libraries print their own flyers about different content. So the idea was if you're having an event, put that flyer there. If you're having an exhibit, put that flyer there. If you'd like to put that book thermometer that says how much money you've raised, put the flyer there. So it was very, we wanted it really to be customized. Uh, and here's an example of one of them. This is a Mark Twain reenactor uh, who came to one of the libraries and did a performance. And then they put up a display of different materials having to do with Mark Twain. We also made a series of bookmarks. Uh, there are six different bookmarks that rolled out um, every other month this year. 
I think my favorite is the one that says, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. And that's Cicero, and that was our first one, and it came out in April. So everybody in Wisconsin is dreaming of warm weather and gardens. Uh, so that was the first one we began with. What was nice about the bookmarks is, again, they branded it with the humanities, branded with uh, library logos um, on the back. But also on the back, we were able to thank donors. So people who had given considerable gifts, anywhere from fifteen to 50000 they were all different corporations that we talked to. This was one way to have donor recognition. We printed 180,000 of these bookmarks. And people using libraries love bookmarks. So this was a very inexpensive but very positive way. And we keep giving them out. In fact, we do donor appeals. We're doing one at the end of the year, and we're sending people sets of these. And again, all of those materials that I just shared are available in PDF form after this webinar. You can look them up. In order to conduct a campaign together, we had every library sign a memorandum of understanding. We wanted to be very clear of what, e what each library's role was and what could their expectations be from the Community Foundation. One of the first things we did in terms of creating a leadership structure was we encouraged each library to craft a five-person leadership team. The idea being that that might be the library director and maybe one or two staff, but more importantly, to bring in somebody from their board or somebody from their friends group or just one or two library enthusiasts from their community to really help with some of the fundraising and the promotion for this campaign. Um, there's an expectation to put up the posters with displays. We met with every single library at least once to prospect. So who do you know in the community who might support this campaign? Uh, who do you not know but you know their name? Um, so we tried to have sort of as many um, introductions to different people. And we would go, the Community Foundation for the Lead Gifts would either go with a library director, which is ideal, or sometimes on our own. Uh, I mentioned everyone had to raise, every library had to raise 10,000. So the last two things were really to speak to collaboration. Each library had to participate in one all-library fundraising event, something that we could say, this weekend, come out and support your libraries. And so everybody would participate in one thing during the year. Uh, and then everybody would con every library would participate in one multi-library fundraising event. So that idea was to have three to five libraries do something all together. And I'll, g I'll give you some examples as we go on. And lastly, what was important we found is we couldn't just communicate with the libraries because the libraries have a board, they have a friends group, and in one case, the library had its own foundation. So we had multiple people, including the Community Foundation, of course, sign this memorandum of understanding as much for buy-in as it was awareness. So that everybody was on the same page as to what our roles were. If I had to do it again, we would have done the memorandum of understanding before we wrote the NEH grant. In this case, we did it after the NEH grant came in. So here's an example of the first ever all-library fundraising event. Uh, this just happened um, about a month ago. It was a terrific night. Um, it was a trivia night, and they had 10 locations around the county. About 700 people participated. They raised $7,000. One of the 25 libraries that ended up participating had done one of these before. No one else had. There is no history of this type of fundraising going on at the public libraries in Dane County. So this was a huge, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of hesitation. And I just came from a meeting with librarians today, and such enthusiasm now that it's over, and they want to do it again. So I think this is likely to become an annual event. And, and as you know, annual events like this have a tendency to grow. So check back in five years. Uh, maybe we'll be raising 20000 A um, lot of partnership opportunities in this project, not only between the libraries, um, but we really have done our best to try to connect them with the Center for Humanities, the historical societies, uh, theater organizations, a variety of different um, what I call stakeholders in the community um, that they can ally themselves with and build more permanent relationships. So not just with fundraising, not just with gifts, but also with other nonprofits to do programming. The, the, the good thing is the libraries are really chomping at the bit to do the programming. And the funding for that programming has actually already begun, and I'll talk about that a bit. Here quickly, just a picture of how we did the campaign leadership. We did design a library action team. So that was seven library directors meeting monthly, 
really responsible for campaign momentum. And because we were only meeting with the seven of them, their job was really to communicate anything we discussed or planned and, and get the buy-in of all of the other 28 libraries. So we've been meeting for about a year now. Last month, they then elected a Beyond the Page Oversight Committee because the endowment starts yielding January 1st, 2013. So next year, they already have money. And so they had to come up with a way of how will we distribute that money. And they're, they're giving a little bit of money to individual libraries. And then they're giving larger grants to libraries that partner with each other. And so they're in the middle of their first ever grant round. Uh, great news, we're actually at a million seventy as of today, so we've raised over a million dollars um, for the libraries already, which is just terrifically gratifying. Uh, over 300 donors, uh, new donors, many of them, um, and you can see here some of them already had a relationship with us. Uh, our three top donors, two individuals and the NEH, represent 850,000 of the 1.4 million. So some interesting lessons learned for us as, as fundraisers as well. This is um, this is um, this is a brochure that we just put into not only our free weekly, but also the Madison Magazine, which is our glossy monthly magazine. So these are two of the more widely read popular press here uh, in the Madison area. So you have to imagine this folded. This is sort of magazine-sized, glossy. This is the front um, and back of this piece. And we did this in conjunction in November with Philanthropy Day. So there's National Philanthropy Day. And we wanted to not only recognize the libraries, but recognize all of the donors who had helped give over a million dollars. And so in the back, you actually see a picture of the bookmarks that we'd given out. And you'll also see Demco's name, because in addition to being encouraging um, and, and inviting me to do a webinar, Demco provided all of the printing for this, so a large in-kind gift to the printing. We printed 50,000 of these um, and also gave us a cash gift. So they've been very encouraging of, of this library project. And this has brought in several thousand dollars and, again, a lot of visibility for the project. And here's the inside. And so I mentioned before I've been walking around doing presentations showing these images. The first thing people say to me when I finish a library presentation is I had no idea idea that the libraries were doing all this. No idea. So what we're trying to do is, as much as we can, talk about the extraordinary richness of collections, of programming, of services. And, and you'll see our, our three lines here. It's hard to read, but I'll read them. The headlines were, build on success, help double the annual programming fund, and celebrate a vital community resource. And so we keep doing this. We're actually doing a series of advertisements in about 20 local papers as a year-end gift appeal, saying some of that same messaging. Here's what's going on at your library. Please help build the fund. Uh, so just a, f a few minutes, and I'm going to go through these slides pretty quickly. But what has worked? Uh, well, we're over a million dollars. And what we learned is that people, whether they use them or not, love libraries. Uh, in fact, we, uh, it was interesting, we met with um, one donor, um, a corporate entity, um, and the people we were talking to said they didn't use the libraries very much themselves. But then they gave us $50,000 because they recognized the importance of the libraries, not only for the community, but for their employees. It's a new collaborative model. Um, we were amazed at some of the gifts that we've received. People who have maybe given $1,000 in the past all of a sudden would give $15,000. And I think, again, it's the, the libraries are so are two things. The libraries are amazing, and libraries haven't really asked for money. A lot of philanthropy going on in Dane County, but they just weren't part of the people who were asking. Uh, some challenges, certainly. Uh, many partners. Doing a project in which you have 29 partners uh, is challenging. And, uh, and right off the bat, we realized explaining the relevancy of libraries is, is challenging. In fact, one of our own board members early on when we were talking about this, raised his hand and said, uh, does anybody even use the libraries anymore? And so we realized that had to be part of our message, was not only are people using the libraries, but the libraries are thriving. And so that became a key point in our NEH grant, and that's become a key point in all of our messaging. Uh, libraries are very reluctant fundraisers. So as much as we could help librarians 
that was really difficult. So we realized we really had to get hands on. Um, we had one lovely librarian do a fundraising event. And when I asked her what she charged, she said, oh, I didn't charge anything. So I think if you're an organization that is so used to giving free, um, giving, giving free uh, collections and programming and services, it's hard to turn around and say, let's charge for it. Um, and a little bit of a glitch, it wasn't major, but the downtown library was supposed to be built after our campaign. Um, our campaign is 1.4 million, their public campaign is 9.5 million, and they ended up announcing at exactly the same time as us. So we've had to do a little bit of um, uh, work with them. Um, I think I talked a lot about this already. Um, particularly interested in watching this endowment grow. So our goal is 1.4 million for now, but we hope that people will give bequests. We hope that the libraries will get used to doing an annual endowment appeal um, as well. So it's very interesting. And I, I will say the Madison Community Foundation has never done a project like this. We do not ordinarily provide leadership in capital campaigns. We simply provide a grant of 30 to 50,000 for a campaign. So this was a real change, and for us it was a proactive opportunity. We fund in seven different focus areas, children, youth, arts, environment, et cetera, and libraries fit all seven of them. So it was a no-brainer when our board voted to get this heavily involved in, in the leadership role. A lot of new donor relationships, I would say more for the community foundation than the libraries. Uh, you know, what's interesting, I, I began by saying that the libraries have all done these successful capital campaigns. Well, any other nonprofit that we work with, once they've done a capital campaign, they then build on all of those donor relationships and, and keep soliciting gifts and, and meeting with those folks. What we found the libraries do is they put that donor list in a folder and, and, and that's it, they're done. Uh, so again, it's really been interesting that organizational culture um, that libraries don't ordinarily fundraise. And my feeling is, like it or not, we now live in an age where libraries do really need to up their fundraising game. If libraries going to want to thrive and not be playing defense all the time when it comes to budget cutting, um, I think building endowments, learning to be more savvy fundraising, people love libraries and want to support them. So allowing those people the opportunity is, is a terrific thing to do. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, through some of these because I've made these points. Um, again, uh, I want to leave some time for questions. A lot of material, so we did as much branding um, as we could, lots of press visibility. Uh, we've been on, in one week, the libraries were on all three television stations and two of the local papers, uh, and that's unheard of for library projects. So uh, again, a great story, too, for the press. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd hire a full-time project coordinator. We had a part-time one, um, and I would also create stronger roles for um, our board members. The, the five-person leadership team that I talked about at the beginning, um, few of the libraries did that. That came as a great surprise to us. So a lot of the weight for the project really landed on the library directors, and the library directors were already wearing too many hats. So if I had to start this over again, I would really, before we even submitted the NEH grant, have the names and the buy-in of a large group of people. For those of you who've been involved in the capital campaign, you know you have a capital campaign committee, and I think that we could have um, eased the burden on some people by, by, by spreading um, the work. So the exciting news is the fund is beginning. Um, the, uh, the fund will start. The, the grants are, are coming in right now. And over the next few years, it will build up to its annual yield of, of 70000 And uh, over the next 10 years, almost a million dollars will be distributed. Um, here are some of the project ideas. Um, uh, we experimented a little with this year, a monologue festival that went to five different libraries. We've got five other libraries who are all doing community outreach with food pantries and health clinics. Those are the types of things that can be funded now by this. This last slide, and there is a form that you can use and download to help you if you are interested in having an initial discussion to replicate any of this yourselves. It just asks the four questions that I would ask if I were sitting in a room, either internally or with a few external stakeholders, on how to move forward in terms of collaboration. And again, anybody who wants to talk to me and ask more questions about that, I'm, I'm really happy to, to give you some lessons learned directly on, on how to move forward. I want to end with this slide. I love this slide. Almost every one of our libraries uh, has a Lego club 
And what I love about the slide is that I, I think it's really uh, a metaphor for what we as communities and what we as library systems can do is we bring all these wonderful resources together. Um, we give people these building blocks to build a great community, and that's exactly what comes out of it, creativity and vision and working together. And I think that's what uh, libraries can do well. I certainly think that's what community foundations can do well. And at our best, that's what we're hoping for in our communities. So thank you all very much for participating. I do think we have a few minutes left for questions. OK, yes, we do. We, and we have a couple questions here. First of all, could you, Tom, elaborate a little bit on what do you mean by triangle relationships? Oh, yeah, so great question. When we planned the fundraising, the triangle was Madison Community Foundation, library, and a local library donor. So we would meet with librarians and we'd say, we'd like to come out of here with five or ten names of people that we could maybe visit together. Um, you know, somebody gave you $100,000 for your capital campaign, let's see if together we can go and see if they'd now give to this. And we really struggled. In fact, um, I'm still working with a librarian who's very close to somebody who gave her 250000 for her library. She's friends with this person, and she doesn't want to go meet with her. She's too uncomfortable because of the friendship. So we, the Community Foundation, did a lot of our own prospecting as well. And I showed a slide where I said 23 of the 30 major donors we already had relationships with. We expected that to be flipped. We thought we'll meet 50 new people because of these 28. You know, if we could have met two or three new donors from times 28 libraries, that would have been an extraordinary way to help fundraise. And, and that didn't work out that way. The libraries did not have good prospect lists and were very uncomfortable working with us. So that was the piece of the triangle that was missing. OK. And then could you also elaborate a little bit on the funding that banks have? Oh, yeah. on your slides? Um, right. So the, um, one of the things we learned is that banks have something called CRA money. And that is Community Reinvestment Act money. So all banks, by law, must give a certain percentage of their money um, to reinvest into the communities um, for underserved populations. So they often do this through financial literacy series, things like that. And so we said, well, what if we could get libraries to do more outreach with underserved populations? So we actually came up with this project in which we are working with five different libraries, and they're going to be going to food pantries and to health clinics. At the food pantry, while the parents are shopping, the librarians will be doing a storytelling hour for the kids. And they're going to be giving out free books, one free book at the food pantry, and then a voucher for a second free book so the kids can build their own personal libraries. You get the second free book if you bring that voucher into the library. And for the first time, Dane County libraries are able to sign people up for library cards off-site. So they're doing that at health clinics, at festivals, at these food pantries. Well, it turns out the banks love this as a use of their money. So we've already had, I think, three or four banks not only give money to endow that kind of programming, but have said, come back to us next year, because of course they have to give that money out every year. So we're hoping that will be a continuing relationship. OK, just one last question. Um, do Dane County libraries have fundraising staff? They do not. Great question. Um, the, Madison, the Madison Public Library system, which has the nine branches in town, they have a foundation with, with one full-time fundraiser and a couple of administrative staff. So that's who's raising the money for those libraries, and that's who's raising the money for the downtown library. All of the rest of the libraries have no fundraising staff. Um, the library schools, we're, we're actually talking to the library school here at the UW to see if we can offer a fundraising class as part of that master's program, because we really feel like at the very least, grant writing, if not donor relationships and donor, uh, donor relations, uh, needs to be part of, you know, that needs to be an arrow in your quiver as you move forward and, and want to do great and ambitious things with your libraries. But no, they don't have the fundraising staff, so that's where the Community Foundation really came in. There are 10 of us. Um, I would say eight of the 10 of us have been involved in this project. Five of the 10 of us have actually been active in going out and fundraising with or for the libraries. Thank you for that information, Tom. Um, OK, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up now, because I know we're pretty much to our time limit. Um, 
from the time that I had heard about this project last spring, I found it particularly exciting and encouraging how it really connects the community and strengthens the libraries involved. So we hope that you are able to take away a few things to try in your communities. Um, there was some great discussion, and we appreciate all of you sharing your time with us. You will be receiving an email follow-up to this presentation in a couple of days, um, possibly even tomorrow. And that email will include a link to this webcast. So if you missed something or just wanted to review, you can go back and refresh yourself on some of these topics or share with some of your colleagues. That email will also include a survey to let us know how we did today. Please take a few moments to fill that out. We love to hear about your feedback and how we can make these sessions even better. And feel free to comment on other topics that you'd like more information on or speakers that you'd like to hear from so we can consider building some of those into our future schedule. We've received great feedback from our previous webinars, and we're planning to use those things as we develop our further programming. There will be a second email later next week that will include the PowerPoint slides and some of the other resources that Tom mentioned. And we'll also get any of the unanswered questions documented, and we'll include those as well. So again, thank you for joining us today. Um, additional webinars will be announced as the schedule is developed going into 2013. So keep checking back at demco.com. And with that, enjoy the holiday season and have a wonderful afternoon.